up everybody? I'm here for Rabbit. We're here on a set of Corsa with my buddy Nate. You've probably seen him on the channel before. He was one of my drivers who drove with me last year in the 12 hours of Sebring on Forza. The phone's blowing off. People, I'm drifting. Leave me alone. So he just recently got a wheel. So we're here on Mega Tamata in some missile cars and we're just getting sideways. He's only been on a wheel for, I'd say, about a week, right? Uh, about a week, week and a half, yeah. About a week, week and a half. And he's uh, getting them skids in some custom cars. So we're here doing a little twin screen so you guys can see what he's doing with my screen, pedal cam and everything. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All of you found in the description box below. And make sure you subscribe and tap that bell notification if you want to be part of the notification gang. So we're here. We're going to get sideways. I'm getting lost in the smoke right now. Oh. So I know a lot of people have been asking for tips and tricks on drifting. And the one thing I can say is we started him off on 540 rotation. Get him used to the way the car handles and stuff like that. He also doesn't have a shifter. He's using paddles. So he has to be able to keep his hands on the wheel. He can't really throw it at full 900. But now I believe you're up at what? 600 something? 600. So... Starting off on a lower rotation has definitely helped you, I think. You've uh, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely improved. Uh, I wasn't able to start off by releasing the wheel and catching it, just because it's very difficult getting that timing down properly. But with it at 540, I was able to just move the entire steering wheel as one with my arms and kind of just feel, okay, this is how far the steering wheel needs to rotate for me to actually keep the car within drift. And from there, I was able to tweak it up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, until I'm now at 600 and still working on it, but trying to get there. But, I mean, a lot of people, when they come onto a wheel, they get frustrated because they can't drift right away. And I know when you tried my my fan attack and my wheel the first time, you couldn't drift at all. And then I think it was a two-hour <laughs> two session where we were working with these cars and working with... Oh, that's going to be a wall... I thought I was going to wreck it. I almost biffed it. <laughs> so, a two-hour session working with a lower rotation in a car that handles pretty well on a very open track, and you were linking tracks, and now I'm having a hard time catching you. And, you know, it just goes to show that, like, people, if you start drifting on a wheel, especially in a Seto or anything, and you can't get it right away, don't get frustrated, don't quit, don't give up. And that's the biggest problem. People get frustrated because they can't do it right away. And my biggest tip is stay with it just practice burn off a set of tires a day and maybe start on lower rotation especially on lower grade wheels such as like not lower grade i say lower grade but the more budget friendly wheels like the g920s and stuff like that don't have as fast of rotation such as my fanatec does so starting on a lower rotation helps you get used to the way the car reacts then you slowly click up the rotation throughout when you get comfortable and then pretty soon you'll be on 900 i know one of my team members anthem didn't run 900 degrees for a long time and now he's on 900 and loving it so he was on 720 and then 800 and then he kicked himself up to 900 Ooh, these are missile cars but i don't want to wreck them too bad <laughs> but now he's on 900 and loving it nate is you know on 600 and having a blast just drifting and that's all it's about it's just about having fun getting sideways and getting used to the cars i think You've had more fun now that you can actually link corners than you did when you couldn't, right? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Of course. Of course. Oh, now I just have you constantly hit my bump. Yeah. <laughs> Door dives. Booty bumps. Hey. What happens when you got somebody chasing you? Why are my headlights not on? Now they are. Oh, doors. But I don't really have... You don't have headlights. Your car's beat up. <laughs> I kind of do. Oh, you stalled it. Oh, no, I didn't stall. I was hitting my headlight button and I lost it. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I hit the wrong button. May or may not have hit the uh, e brake. So I think some of the takeaway I can say is find a car you're comfortable with. Whether it be a Tando Buddies car, if you're first starting out drifting, which, you know, to me, Tando Buddies feel a little bit numb in the front, but a lot of people love them. And I can drift them, and they're a lot of fun to drive, especially in big open lobbies where there's 15, 20 people just running trains with, you know, Tando Buddy cars. Or get in a car like 
Nate's, Nate's rocking a Missile 13 with my physics that are in all my cars that are coming out of the car pack, and it seems to help him out. I gave him my Z, he was able to drive it, so I think I'm going to be releasing here very shortly. Basically, I messed that up. <laughs> basically a trainer car in my physics, a lower horsepower car with my physics, and make it public so you guys can have basically a trainer car and get used to it so when the car pack drops with all my cars you'll be used to the physics and be able to slay with my cars in the car pack with all the real world cars i'm building wall tap no wonder you don't have a tail light on that corner wow. and i mean i'm just solely impressed by the fact that a week's worth of practice not even like all day all week like a couple hours maybe an hour or so a day one set of tires and in a week you've gone from spinning out to we're running we're drifting here at Tamata Mega Tamata circuit you run in full tracks I'm running your door kind of bumping you a little bit but it's cool go that way I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I will say one thing that was incredibly helpful was just messing around with different cars I mean I remember you gave me that 350 fair lady to start off with that thing was nice and easy to get going and you swung me the S15, I couldn't handle the S15. You threw a couple more cars my way, and once I got a car that felt right, which was the S13, once I got a car that felt right, I was able to just keep practicing and get the hang of it. So, I say that now, as I'm going up walls. I mean, you're never going to be perfect. I mean, but, yeah, get like you said, getting the hang of a car, when, once you get a car that you can kind of feel for, keep rocking at it, keep going and keep going until you get the hang of drift and put you just keep practicing one corner and one corner and one corner until it's like, okay, I got that corner down. How do I get the next corner down? Okay, how do I link them? See if you can follow. Get lost in the smoke, Nate. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, that's going to be a wall. So, I mean, it just you guys, if you guys have been on, around the channel long, and if you guys know, I make mistakes, I crash, I mess up, it's bound to happen. Just don't get frustrated with it, just keep doing it, keep at it, and you know, just have fun with it. You know, drifting on simulators like this, it's all about fun, and if you can, even though, like Nate's probably not super comfortable tandeming yet, like in chase position, I'm sure, um, with left foot braking and tandeming is a whole nother whole nother discipline that needs to be learned learning how to left foot brake and not hit somebody when to use the clutch when to use a handbrake that's a whole nother you know discipline but if you can run a smooth line even in the lead position and somebody follows you you'll have just as much fun leading as you would chasing because you're running down the line that allows somebody to get really close to your door and you know you can just see them creeping in whether it's in your mirror if you're in first person or you know on your bumper in third but you know the fact that you're running a line that somebody is tandeming with and bumping doors on like that <laughs> it's just as much fun as chasing now chasing to be able to stick on somebody's door oh gosh stick on somebody's door is a rush and it's a thrill but it is a harder demographic so if you're just learning how to drift, don't go out there. Don't try and chase. You know, don't try and stick in somebody's door. Learn how to run a good, smooth, clean lead run first. Because once you get a lead run, then you'll understand how to. You'll be able to get into chasing, left foot braking, slowing down, being able to follow. But you know, he's uh, doing a damn good lead run. I'm uh, slowly falling back, but I'm able to suck on his door when I need to and have a blast with it. I mean, even though you're not chasing, I'm sure you're still having a blast with me. Creeping oh, out the door. Death. Oh, there I am. Hello. So it's a different view for you guys today. You guys can see the wheel cam. We got Nate's camera going on his screen, so you guys can see what he sees on his screen and all his telemetry and stuff like that. It's definitely a, a little bit of a different take on today, but you know, bringing Nate on here to talk to you guys about somebody who's only been drifting for a week, and you guys can see that. You know, he's never drifted before, never in real life, never drifted in game. He's tried once or twice on my rig, but until he got his own wheel and he was just sitting there on his own wheel, you're taking the short Cut line. The <laughs> and now he's pretty much linking here at Tomato Circuit. It's, it's, a, it's a slow progression. 
but it's a progression nonetheless. When we first got on a week ago, when he first got his wheel, he couldn't even make a turn, and now we've just ran three laps in chasing these cars, just having a blast. It's a smoke show, though, for sure. I can barely see. You don't need to see. I don't need to see. Now, the one thing he is doing that, you know, I'm not, is he's not really using e-brake much. He doesn't have a handbrake, he has a button, but he's using more clutch kicks, more initiation, inertia, and car weight, and just power to drift. You don't need a handbrake to drift. I know I've used my handbrake as a clutch before, it's a different style of drifting, but you don't need it to drift, and you know what? It shows, because, oh, he's running, I'm going to take that pass. Outside line, all right. I messed myself up on that. I saw that. You got lost in the sauce. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Oh, man. These cars, this track, it's fun. Go. Let's uh, do a little uh, door dives now. I'll try to keep a little smoother if I can. I lost boost. Oh god. Uh, we good though. They're Little missile cars. Touch. We're good. They're missile cars. <laughs> Hit my rear bumper. Oh, that was my fault. I mean, mine's not as much of a missile as yours. Yours is missing a fender, a hood, a bumper, taillight, trunk's all knocked out of whack. Front bumper and real bumper. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. You were on that last turn. Wow. You were on that last turn really wide. Almost wall tapping. I like to try run that last turn wide. Oh my. Too much angle. Too <laughs> much angle. Lost it. I see you. Goodbye. That was a little bit of a bumper bump. Cut that. Oh, sounds bumper. sick. I love these cars. It's a blow valve pops. A little dirt drop. You know when you've been hitting a corner really hard in these cars when you just see that nice fire pop at the end? Oh, yeah. God, I'm just bouncing curves. Stay behind you. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Don't lose it. Reinitiate. Are we good? Oh. Right there. Still there. Oh, my God. All right, this is fun. This is actually good practice for me. A little bit of grass. You got it, you got it. This is good tandem practice for me, though. You and all your uh, competitions? Well, it, learning how to tandem somebody who may not run a perfect like line is definitely... This is challenging for me, and it's actually... You're saying I can't run a good line? <laughs> I say the perfect flowy lead ride, man. I'm saying I can't run a good line. <laughs> it's good practice, though, for me, for sure. Oh! oh. Bogged it down. I did. I did. You know, I just realized my missile car has a bride seat in it. It doesn't even have an NRG seat. Fail on my part. What? Your car's got NRG stuff, but I'm not. I got a bride seat in here. What am I doing? I got an NRG wheel though. But not a, you know, I got a bride seat. <clears throat> That'll get changed. I love this 180. I was surprised that I had working headlights. I figured that out last night. I went to a night track. Oh yeah, I made I made sure I gave you some sort of lighting because it'd be very hard not to have lights. I was surprised that the tracks didn't have working lights, and I was like, ah, that would take a lot of coding to get a track to actually have uh, working lights. There's some tracks out there that have working lights, like some of the mountain roads have actual like corner lights and uh, overhead lights and like blinking lights for like um, construction I cones. Had, I saw that Driftland's uh, clipping points; those have green lights on it. That's pretty. Cool. There's a Driftland at I night find. too. Yeah, oh, that fire pop though. That bumper tap. I see All that. right, I'm right here. You ain't I going know. Anywhere, I man. <laughs> oh my god, doors! <laughs> oh, don't lose it! No! That way. I got you. <laughs> Saved you. Fuck him. <laughs> Oh, are you gonna initiate for me too? I just did. 
<laughs> okay, I don't need to pull the e-brakes. You're gonna do that. Gosh. No, no way. Push <laughs> you. Oh man. Oh, this is fun. It's so much better drifting with something. Oh man. yeah. All oh, that big fireball pop coming in. God, I love this 180. I think I need to build a missiled out 180. Crack some tail lights, maybe crack a window. Can you remove one of the uh, one of the headlights? Make it wink just on one side. Yes. Just sitting there, caught. Ah! <laughs> Pops the turn it on and off. Oh, I stalled. Another thing I will say, you were talking earlier about uh, helping out and trying to find things that work well. Another thing that I kept having to tinker with constantly is once I found a car that this car that works, every track I had to swap the gear ratio just because that. Yeah, that's that's um that's something about comfortability. Like if you're more comfortable drifting at a certain gear at a certain speed, you need to tweak the gears to be kind of in your comfort zone. Little winky headlights. Uh, in your comfort zone of gearing at each track, that's you know, and it's also finding a good tire set, uh, like tire pressure set, and where you're comfortable at running the car. And know that once you run for a couple laps, your tires are going to get hotter, so they are going to start getting a little greasier. They're going to get a little bit more slip, and you're going to find yourself not using as much throttle as you were in the beginning. Oh, we're done. <laughs> I just sent us both into the wall. Oh, man. Pops. I think we've had a very uh, successful little uh, tandem session, don't you say? Oh, okay, yeah. A little, uh, little crazy, a little fun, a little different perspective for you guys seeing two cars. Now, if you had a wheel cam, that'd be a whole other thing. Like two different wheel cams. Yeah. Kind well, of a, well, yeah. We'll have to get that set up. Maybe we can throw down some twin wheel cam videos on his, uh, you're rocking the TX, right? Correct, yeah. TX, factory pedals, oh. And, I mean, he's throwing down. You don't need a super expensive rig to to throw down. My G920 throws down just as much. I know a lot of you guys want to see a G920 come back. Uh, videos will be coming back. For sure, Nate just throwing a smoke show. So I think that'll do it here for this episode here on Ascetic Corsa. Some tips and tricks for you guys if you're just starting off drifting to show a little bit of practice, a good car. Even you can, you know, start throwing down some baller lines in just a matter of days. It's not, it doesn't take a lot of time. I've been drifting for quite some years so you know don't think you need to be drifting just as long as i do to have a blast i mean nate's been drifting for a week and it's a ball and you know it's a fun to slide with him and you know get doors with him and stuff like that so make sure you guys follow me on all social media all of us found in the description box below if you guys like this and you guys want to see some more tips and tricks from i would say a pro level drifter to a amateur level drifter here on the channel let me know down in the comments because i'm sure nate will come back i'm sure nate would uh would not mind coming back and talking a little bit more about his drifting endeavors from i would say from not to pro An entry level point of view yeah entry level because i mean i can sit here and talk to you guys a lot i mean i have a good amount of drifting experience and stuff like that in irl as well as in virtual but getting the perspective of somebody who's just starting off to my perspective is it's definitely good for you guys who are just starting out drifting. So, biggest takeaway, guys, don't get frustrated. Keep at it. Have fun with it. The biggest thing is, it's to have fun. You know, drifting here in a set of Corsa or Forza or everything is just about fun and fun with friends and stuff like that. You don't have to be a pro-level drifter to have a good time. I mean, case in point, <laughs> we're just having fun bashing doors. I have more fun with Thrasher lobbies than I do, like, some tandem, like, pro level lobbies and stuff yeah the tandems might be closer but sometimes thrasher lobbies and door banging and missile cars are a little bit more fun than some pro lobbies so get yourself into a thrasher level have some fun and as always i thank you guys for watching i'm evil rabbit i'll see you guys on the track